Denver Broncos general manager George Payton met with the media on Tuesday and it posed an interesting question as to who could be the Broncos franchise player going forward. We discuss that, we debate that, we look at a couple of the storylines impacting the Broncos, whether it be at the offensive tackle position with Garrett Bull's injury and who's going to take over the nickel cornerback spot. Sarah Benninger, myself, Cody Work, we break all that action down and much more on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are locked on Broncos. Your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome back into a brand new episode of Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast here on the Lockdown NFL Network, your team every day from the South Stands to the end zone. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, joined alongside my co-host, Sarah Bettinger. Both of us, we cover the Denver Broncos for the Lockdown Network and Nine News. Make sure you follow and subscribe free and available everywhere you get your podcast, your favorite podcasting provider. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Turn on notifications if you're watching us in video format on YouTube so you never miss out on a day's worth of Denver Broncos news, content, and coverage here the Lockdown Broncos podcast. Today's episode of Lockdown Broncos is brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. McDonald's has always been more than just a place to get tasty, affordable food. It's a place where friends, family, and community can come together in one place. A big thank you to our friends at McDonald's for always being there. I'm loving it. And Sarah, I'm loving the fact that we get to talk Broncos football here once again, myself with you and us with Broncos country a lot of great insight and obviously a, you know a tumultuous time here for the fan base with the Broncos sitting at four and four but how you doing my friend doing great Cody doing great like you said it's always a privilege to talk Broncos football privilege to be on the show and, and a privilege to to be just you know engaging with Broncos country it's tough times but man we're in this together so let's keep talking about it. let's keep trying to talk our way through this Hey Amen. There was one famous Broncos coach that always had the big quote, tough times don't last, tough people do. Mike Shanahan, the GOAT, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. But, you know, Sarah, uh, George Payton met with the media on Tuesday. He had, he had a lot of great insight, and I wanted to touch on, too, just the thing that I've been impressed with him the most since he's come on as, and as general manager. And I want to make one thing clear, too. Since George Payton has come on as GM, Every single thing that he has said he is going to do, he has done. He's lived up to that. So, in my opinion, he's off to a great start as the team's general manager. Now, he had to give a lot of insight into a lot of stuff regarding the Von Miller trade, the current state of the team sitting at 4-4. Four and four. He says, you know, we're a 4-4 four and four football team right now, but it feels like we're 2-6. and six. And, and I, I go back and I look at where the Broncos have been, some of the struggles that they've had, and you can maybe make the assumption that, you know what, yeah, they, they haven't looked the best in the last four and a half, five weeks, right? They obviously started off really hot. They had that drop off there. But George Payton was very candid about why he came to Denver. He was open about the coaching staff without being too revealing. That's the thing. He's always tiptoed. He's been very open and honest and transparent while also saying the right things because there's certain things you can't say in the public eye when you're a general manager. It's absolutely true, Cody. It's absolutely true. And I think that that's what people are missing in this. They want George Payton to be like one of the same, you know, trolls on Twitter that's willing to just call everything out negatively, you know, have these knee-jerk reactions in public and call out Vic Fangio, call out Pat Shermer, call out Teddy Bridgewater when in fact he really did the opposite of that. And I think uh, it's like we were talking about off the air, Cody. I feel like George Payton really does a great job at doing things that that show this is what I'm willing to do for the next guy in this spot. And and he didn't say that. It wasn't like he put it that way or anything like that. But, man, he's going to go to bat for his head coach. He's going to go to bat for his quarterback, for his offensive coordinator. I think he'll make the tough decisions like we saw with the Von Miller trade. And and Payton's realistic about where the team's at. People are people are tripping over the things that he said when, in reality, he's like, he basically said this team's not a championship contender. He's, he's like, we traded Von. We wanted to do right by Von. Well, do you do right by Von Miller by trading him to a team like the Rams if you believe that you are a Super Bowl contender? So I feel like there's there's so much that you can read in between the lines when a general manager talks. The things that he actually says, we need to we need to kind of evaluate those things. But I, I love listening to this guy talk, Cody. Like you said before we got onto the show, I mean, he's just a great speaker. He's really engaging. He does a great job. I wish he could break down all 53 guys on the team and just like, I want to hear his scouting report on everybody and get me fired up about this roster. Yeah, no, I'm with you. He does his background on everything. And I think for him coming into the NFL as a scout, he still applies those principles to this day, which is something that you really love too. And, and also, I also want to pinpoint, you know, George Payton's not going to go out there, as you mentioned, throw guys like George Payton. I mean, Vic Fangio, he's not going to go out there and throw Pat Shermer or Teddy Bridgewater under the bus, but he did say something too. He says the offense needs to play better. He's like, I like Pat. He says, but the offense must play better. So it's, that's kind of like that stern way of saying, Hey, you know what? I like you. You know, we're, we're, we're close friends. I admire you, but 
it isn't happening right now. The job is not getting done. It's not good enough right now. So we kind of put that out there in a sense without saying, hey, you know, you need to do a better job doing the offense because that's really the reality. You can't do that. And also the perception, too. If George Payton were to come out and say everything that the fan base wanted him to say, guess what? Nobody would want to come to Denver. No player, no free agency, no agent would want to negotiate with him. No coach would want to be part of an organization like that. So it's much bigger than just the emotion and the just the, the need to be angry at something, Sarah. So I think it's something we should absolutely touch on. But there was one thing he mentioned in that press conference. I thought it would be an interesting question that we bring up here. And obviously, Broncos country, we want your thoughts and on Twitter and respond to us at Lockdown Broncos, at Cody Work NFL, at Sarah Bettinger, or even here in the YouTube comment section. But uh, with Von Miller now leaving, right? He was considered the face of the franchise for this organization. With him now out the door, when you look at this roster, Sarah, who, in your opinion, would you make the face of the franchise here for the Denver Broncos? I, I think it's pretty easy at the top of my head. I think there's a couple guys you can make the face of it. And it doesn't necessarily have to be one, but if you had to make one guy the face of the franchise, who is your selection? Well, it, it's got to be Justin Simmons, right? I mean, he's he's been on the team longer than most of the guys here. Obviously, Brandon McManus, probably the longest tenured Bronco at this point, but Justin Simmons certainly <laughs> plays the biggest role on the team. I don't know how how Brandon McManus would fare as the face of the franchise. I'm sure he's he's a funny guy. You know, it would be yeah. it would be entertaining for a bit. We know that he's wanted to be the quarterback, the emergency QB, but Justin Simmons really the QB of the defense right now. I know he doesn't necessarily call the plays out there, but he's this team's leader, and he he's yeah. proven that. So he's the face of the franchise. He's he's available to the media pretty much every week. We get to see him. We get to hear from him. We know that he loves the Denver Broncos. We know that he's passionate about the community. He 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 represents as we talked about. You know, basically uh, to the point of ad nauseum before he signed his long term contract. He is everything everything on the field and off that everybody has always wanted to be like the perfect ideal Bronco. If you could paint the picture, he does everything in the community, right? He does everything in the locker room, right? He plays the game at a very high level an all pro level. He's got now a long-term contract to me. Justin Simmons is, is probably the guy who's sliding into that spot. Yeah. I mean, I'd say if you had to go with anybody, Justin's probably the best fit right now. And if there's a guy, maybe on the offensive side of the ball that I could look at, you know, I could say maybe Cortland Sutton, maybe he becomes that other cornerstone guy for you. You know, I don't think, you necessarily have to be limited to just one. It's always interesting to say, like, if you had to choose one, who would it be? But, you know, really, it'd be Justin Simmons, Cortland Sutton. Those would be the two guys I'd really build my franchise around. One on the offensive side of the ball, one on the defensive side of the ball, and I think the rest will come to fruition. Those guys are both fantastic leaders, which is something that you need for someone who's going to be the face of your franchise. So, obviously, a lot of insight from George Payton, Broncos country. Let us know who the face of the franchise would be if you could appoint them that in the comment section down below. But coming up here in just a moment, we're going to talk about some of the storylines the Broncos are facing ahead of the Cowboys matchup this Sunday. It's going to be an early game, by the way, but it impacts the defensive side of the ball with Bryce Callahan's position that's now vacant. Who's going to take it? And not to mention with Garrett Bulls being out this week, what can we expect from Calvin Anderson against this Dallas Cowboys defense? We talk about that coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, folks, let me tell you about McDonald's, the sponsor of today's episode of the show. McDonald's has always been more than just a place to get a tasty, affordable food. It's a place where friends and family can come to reconnect, proudly serving communities since 1965. It's a place where classmates can meet up for a study group, knowing that they'll have dependable Wi-Fi and the supplies of French fries and McFlurries. Win or lose, it's a place where teammates, competitors, the home team, or the away team can come to recharge. And it's the place that you always look forward to stopping at on a long road trip to rest your legs and to refuel. And I just want to give a shout out to one listener, Lockdown Broncos, C. Keith. Every Wednesday, he sends me a picture with a screenshot of him listening to Lockdown Broncos, and he's got a McRourke, a sausage egg McMuffin with a hash brown in between it. That is our shout out here of the week here, and obviously for McDonald's. Appreciate you, C. Keith, for your interaction there. Broncos country is also a great way for you to get involved in the show here as well. So head to your local McDonald's to refuel and reconnect with the Lockdown Broncos podcast. Ba da ba ba ba, sir. I'm loving it. And another thing that I'm loving is the Get Upside app, sir. And the reason I love the Get Upside app is because we know as gas prices, they continue to rise and fall, peaks and valleys. You never have that certainty about how expensive gas prices can be. But one thing is for certain with the Get Upside app today, you'll never have to pay full price at the gas pump ever again because they'll actually put money back into your wallet. And if you go to the Get Upside app, which is available in the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store, and you download it, sign up, make sure you use promo code TOUCH 
touchdown, and they'll give you an additional 25 cents per gallon cash back on top of the already 25 cents per gallon cash back that they give you every single time that you fill up your gas tank. That is 50 cents per gallon cash back on your first fill up today with the Get Upside app. And ladies and gentlemen, they can put 200 to 300 dollars back into your pockets based on how much you drive. If you drive as much as me, I put a lot of miles on my car from this time all the way throughout the summer with training camp and traveling back and forth to Denver. It is very critical. The Get Upside app comes in very handy to help offset the uppercut that gas prices provide today. So, ladies and gentlemen, they also make it easy for you to cash out. They can connect your bank account, your PayPal, or you can even connect to Amazon or other gift card brands today. It's an easy way to cash out with the Get Upside app. Once again, use promo code Touchdown and you'll get 25 cents per gallon cash back on your first purchase today with an additional 25 cents with promo code touchdown, 50 cents per gallon cash back bonus today on your first fill with the get upside app. All right, Sarah, jumping into these storylines on today's episode, locked on Broncos ahead of the Dallas Cowboys match. we heard from Vic Fangio on Wednesday, he met with the media. And one of the things he talked about with Bryce Callahan, he shed more light. Bryce is heading to injured reserve. Garrett Bowles is not both guys who have injuries respectively here. Bryce Callahan has a knee injury, but it's not necessarily one that requires surgery. So Vic said a few weeks, but the timeline is about six to 10 weeks, right? So that could be anything, Sarah, at this point. And one of the key things for Bryce Callahan during this time is going to be to rehab and rest and strengthen the exterior of his leg because it's obviously that, that one ligament. You want to have stability there. That way, when you plant, you don't have that overbuckling sensation. So it, it presents and it reduces a lot of the risk that you take associating with planting and cutting things that DBs need to do. But Bryce Callahan spot at the nickel cornerback position is up for grabs there. Now, in your opinion, we have two candidates, Nate Harrison, Kyle Fuller, and even Vic Fangio mentioned Patrick Sertan the second. Which guy gives the Broncos the best chance defensively at the nickel spot? Well, I feel like to me, Cody, this is an opportunity for Kyle Fuller to really get back on the saddle, right? I mean, he's got an opportunity right now after being benched. Now you can go, see you what can you go did forward. Too. It's Cowboys week. Yeah, you like that? Get back on the saddle, play in the Dallas Cowboys. Kyle Fuller is a guy to me, Cody, that I really feel like, you know, he would have been, if he had been traded and I was the team that traded for him, I would have been super excited as a fan because I'm like, look, like this is kind of like a short term reclamation project. Yeah, he got burned on some big plays, but maybe he still has that that high level play in him. So I think having been benched, that does something for a guy that can do something for a guy mentally, yeah. right? It can it can kick you in a high gear, put that chip on your shoulder. Kyle Fuller's not going to be done playing in the NFL after this season either, Cody. So I'm guessing that he would want to go out there and prove that he deserves another big money contract. So I feel like to me, that's your best option for success. I know everybody, you know, kind of liked some of what we saw from Nate Hairston in preseason. He had the interception at joint practices against the Vikings. Shout out to the real ones who were paying attention way back then. <laughs> but yes. I feel like to me, it's Kyle Fuller, man. Kyle Fuller is the guy. He's got to go out there. Even if he changes positions, we've seen that that bring success for a number of other guys in Vic Fangio's defense, namely Kareem Jackson switching from corner to safety, namely Bryce Callahan really excelling when he was moved from the nickel to the outside corner position last year out of necessity. Maybe moving to the nickel could be really beneficial for Kyle Fuller. Well, we know that it's saying Bassey's back on the practice field this week for the organization. Uh, no Duke Dawson just yet. No Michael Ojemudi, according to Vic Fangio. So Bassey's going to be a little bit ahead of schedule here, which is great to see because I thought he was doing a pretty solid job last year once he really got in. Now, he got in, in I believe, it was that week four match against New York Jets. He had his struggle. He got benched, and then he had to get put back in, and then he was playing great from that standpoint on. He had his first career interception against the Saints last year, and then he had a really good game, in my opinion, leading up in that Kansas City Chiefs game where, unfortunately, non-contact ACL injury in the back of the end zone, and that's kind of what ended his season there. So a lot of promise with the saying, Bassey, those Wake Forest players know how to play there, sir. But, you know, looking at Nate Hairston, yeah, I agree. You know, I, I wouldn't even be opposed at this point, sir, if the Broncos go with a by-committee approach. You know, maybe rotate these guys on series and see who really does the better job. I think it's really hard to gauge in practice how one guy does versus maybe how another guy can do. It's really hard to get a real determining factor as to who's going to be the better guy. But you look at Fuller with the experience. You know, you want to pay him, right? You're paying him $9 million, you're $9.5 million to be exact. You want to make sure that he sees time on the field because the last couple of games, zero snaps for him. Vic did mention PS2, and, and I tell you what, I'm very skeptical against this. I do not want Vic Fangio to move Patrick Sertan to the nickel right now, just because I think he's playing so well on the outside, he's getting comfortable. And when you move a guy to another position, we know the nickel position in Vic's defense, it's hard. It's difficult. It demands a lot. Not saying that he shouldn't rise to the challenge, but if he's playing really well on that outside and Ronald Darby's really starting to play well as well, 
Why change the chemistry? Why interrupt that? So I hope we don't see him there. That's my thoughts. I'm with you on that. Absolutely, Cody. It's finally gaining some cohesion on the back end, right? That's exactly what you're hoping for at this point in the season. So hopefully they can continue to build off the performance against Washington. It, it Sure, it was another bad team, right? But any any type of continuity they can gain, any type of momentum they can get, any type of get right that the Broncos would get, I think they would take. And the defense playing well is going to be our constant throughout the season. The offense may ebb and flow, but I think the defense has to find a way to remain consistent regardless of the injury. So I'm with you on that. I say we got to keep rolling with what's working and we got to continue to build on the things that are working as well. Well, in terms of keeping things rolling as well, Garrett Bowles, obviously we know is going to miss this week and he's questionable for next week as well I mean he took kind of a shot luckily it wasn't a more severe injury usually when you get rolled up on or hit from behind in the ankle injury you know area it could lead to an Achilles but you know it's just an ankle sprain right now he's going to miss this week could be back next week against the Philadelphia Eagles then you have the bye week so you know what if I'm the Broncos you're looking at Calvin Anderson right now right a guy that Vic Fangio said he has a lot of confidence a lot of belief in right now at the position and we saw that he could step over to left tackle we saw it last year he could step in at left tackle and he can do a pretty good job there. So it's going to be a big test, though, Sarah, because, look, this Dallas Cowboys defense is much improved under Dan Quinn. And I tell you what, they have playmakers. You have Micah Parsons. You have Randy Gregory. You just have all these guys that can disrupt what you want to do offensively. So it's a big test, obviously, for Calvin Anderson this week. First action at left tackle this season. Uh, a little intrigued by this one, Sarah. What are your expectations coming into this game for a guy like Calvin? Yeah, Cody, my expectations for Calvin Anderson, I, I remember, I think back to the Carolina Panthers start that he had last season. I thought he played extremely well you know all things considered he had played really poorly in a previous start at right tackle against the the las vegas raiders and then he really bounced back i think for me cody he's a much better left tackle than right tackle that seems to be his more natural position so i'm i'm looking forward to him playing well in this game of course you know randy gregory having sort of a breakout season which is weird to say because it feels like he's been in the league for almost 10 years at this point even though i know he hasn't but it, yeah. it does feel like he's been in the league for a long time and 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 when i say in the league i mean like in and out of the league but he is having a breakout season he is very good and uh demarcus lawrence i don't know if he's if he's playing in this game or not but i mean the cowboys do have some dogs on that side of the ball micah parsons trayvon diggs i think it's going to be a huge test for calvin anderson to go out there and, and really say hey you know i can make some impact blocks i can get out in the running game i can protect teddy bridgewater and pass pro and keep this offense hopefully actually get it get it flowing a little bit you never know what kind of change is going to be that catalyst of course garrett Bowles, a great tackle but i'm expecting big things from calvin anderson yeah i hope he can step up to the table this week obviously we appreciate calvin he's a good friend of the show but a big test against the dallas cowboys you know and looking at that cowboys defense what we saw against the vikings last week they're good for a couple of 15 yard penalties and randy gregory had i believe two in a row last week so we'll see if the broncos maybe can get uh get under the skin a little bit right some chippiness but i don't i don't know that stuff is all minute in detail at the end of the day but for calvin it like you mentioned protect teddy bridgewater be able to get to the next level on your blocks on runs to the outside make sure your double team the communication is on par and I think really the offensive line communication is going to be the biggest thing when you have a new guy in at left tackle specifically trying to protect your quarterback that's going to be a big thing that I'm looking forward to watching but Sarah another thing I'm looking forward to watching is some of the other storylines that lead us up into this matchup a little bit of a tell of the tape that we're going to get to coming up here in just a moment but before we do that I'm going to tell you about betonline.ag and the best bet when you have your football coverage is to go to betonline.ag and they're back and better than ever with a new web interface for the start of the NBA basketball season more props odds and lines than ever before bet online remains your number one spot for all the basketball and football action this season you can head to the new website or the updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and you can receive a deposit bonus of 50 percent on your first deposit today when you use promo code locked on it's going to get you a 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit today at betonline.ag from basketball football baseball postseason NHL boxing UFC MMA right from your favorite Vegas casino games don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts.
All right, sitters, we jump into the fourth quarter action. Today's episode of Lockdown Broncos. Just want to say thank you so much to Broncos Country for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day, whether it's on your favorite audio podcasting platform where you can follow and subscribe, or if it's here on YouTube where you can watch us on your TV, your phone, or your computer. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on notifications so you never miss out on all the action. But Sarah, my friend, a little bit of a tell of the tape here. Some interesting things that I'm looking for. The Broncos have an early 11 a.m. kickoff mountain time standard against the Dallas Cowboys this Sunday. We know about those Eastern time zone games, my friend. I don't think we have to say too much about that. I know Broncos country already takes note of that as well. But I wanted to look at some interesting things and kind of this tail of the tape here. When you look at both teams, the Denver Broncos right now offensively, they're 10th in the NFL in terms of overall giveaways. They've given away the ball 10 times this season. The Dallas Cowboys, they're 13th. They've given it away nine times, right? So the discrepancy between 10th and 13th is really by just one giveaway each. Last week, the Cowboys coming off of a game, they didn't have Dak Prescott, who we know is just very electric. He's their franchise guy. And they have a loaded offense with the, the weapons they have at running back, at wide receiver, at tight end. And Man, this just looks like a very tough matchup for the Broncos. Now, initially here, Sarah, I wanted to ask you, what do the Broncos have to do offensively in this game against Dallas in order to have a chance to win? You know, they really got to find ways to sustain drives, right, Cody? And and it's got to be there, – there has to be a mix of those drives where they're really trying to, like – actually maintain possession, keep the ball out of Dak Prescott's hands. There has to be a mix of that, plus taking some some shots and, and, and having drives that are going to be faster. Don't be afraid to necessarily put the ball in Dak Prescott's hands by, by not taking any shots whatsoever downfield. I think that that's, that's a key for me, Cody, in this game, is you, you're not going to be able to beat a team like Dallas that's capable of scoring 40 points with just the constant, like I've mentioned before, it's like a game of Pong. It's just going straight back and forth <laughs> across the field, horizontally so for me that's a key you have to mix those kinds of drives well and Denver can't afford to get into a shootout considering what we've seen from the offense they're just not they're going to be outmatched if that's the case so hopefully the Broncos defense comes ready to collect here and really focusing on both defenses here really just for Denver surprisingly enough sir at four and four the Broncos have the sixth ranked defense in the NFL. They have a top defense against the run. They have a top defense against the pass. And everybody's like, wait, that doesn't make sense considering some of the things that we've seen the last several weeks from this team. It's all starting to balance itself out a little bit. And I talked about the fact that I think the defense will be fine, Sarah. The injuries start to iron out a little bit. The new depth pieces are going to get a little bit more acclimated. Stephen Weatherly, Kenny Young, Baron Brown, they're going to be a little more acclimated this week than they were last week. So I think that bodes well for their chances there. But this sixth ranked defense for the Denver Broncos, they're going to be taking on the number one ranked offense in the NFL and with Dak Prescott with the explosiveness at wide receiver that he has I mean Cedric Wilson even throwing passes now for the Dallas Cowboys Cooper Rush obviously a reliable backup so far but Dak Prescott is back you have Ezekiel Elliott you have Pollard out of the backfield that is a two-headed monster at running back D- guys that can do different things both guys can hurt you in the pass and the run game not to mention you have a uh, tight end uh, I believe it's Dalton Schultz you also have C.D. Lamb you have Amari Cooper I mean Sarah on paper it looks like the Broncos are are outmatched here by just the explosive firepower that they have. In your opinion, when you're the sixth ranked defense going against the number one ranked offense, how do you maybe put things into perspective a little bit about how Denver can reduce some of those big time plays that we've seen them make? Well, Cody, to me, I feel like it's really a matter of just limiting those big plays deep downfield. That's where the Broncos have really struggled. And ironically, as much as you and I have have talked about the Broncos getting their offensive weapons opportunities for yards after the catch. I feel like that's an area where Dallas really excels and they've got some guys that are very good at it. They can beat you deep, but they can also beat you after the catch. And let's not forget Ezekiel Elliott too. I mean, the, their passing attack is so impressive. You forget Ezekiel Elliott is, is one of the best running backs in the league. So to me, they have to limit those deep plays downfield and almost you almost I hate to even say it this way because it sounds like dirty almost, but you want to put Dak Prescott in positions where he has to like at least think about taking off and running because we know he doesn't want to do that after the injury that he sustained last season. The last thing this guy wants to do is, is go out there and start running, running around yeah. the field and, and risk potentially getting hurt. So that's that's kind of where I feel like they, they have a similar strategy to what they had last week with Taylor Heineke. You want to force him to you want to force him to have to make a, a you know a second or third decision instead of being able to make his number one decision. So that's where I think they can really exploit Dak Prescott potentially. We know he's a playmaker. We know he's one of the elite 
elite QBs in the game. So you can only hope to limit, but at the same time, maybe you get a little bit lucky in this game and you throw him off early and then you get him to, to maybe force some turnovers in this game. He's coming off injury, right? So you, hopefully a little rust, something like anything that can give the Broncos a competitive advantage in that way. This game kind of gives me a little vibe here, Sarah, and I, I, I don't mean to sound overly optimistic here, but it gives me the vibe that I had when the Broncos took on the Houston Texans two years ago, right? Yes. This was in Drew Locke's you know, first road game, like his first actual start. Uh, to me, I have a similar vibe. Broncos going on the road. They're going to have to be road warriors, right, which has been a tough task. They've struggled at home. They've been fairly decent on the road outside of you know Cleveland and Pittsburgh. Uh, but for the most part here, you have the second-ranked defense in the NFL in total points allowed, 17.1. Who would have thought the Broncos would have the, the second-ranked defense at 17.1? one points allowed per game, which it goes to show right now scoring, except for the Denver Broncos is up around the NFL. So we'll take that, you know, kind of what we can, but also for the Dallas Cowboys, they're ranked third in the NFL averaging 32.1 points per game. That is a lot. I mean, I would give an arm and a leg right now for the Broncos to be able to average 32.1 points per game, Sarah, because they would win. Fine. Yeah, that would be amazing. If they could even score 30 points in this game, that would be great. I'm not even asking <laughs> for per game, just this game. Give me 30 points against the Dallas Cowboys. I'm begging you guys. Uh, I, I mean, we need to see a breakout performance from the offense, Cody. It's high time. It's high time. Yes, it, it is time. I mean, the time is now. And I, I don't think that the Broncos have any more time that they can sit back and wait and hope that the offense is all of a sudden going to click and get things together. They have to do it. And Vic said something this week as well, and, and this will be the last thing I touch on here today. He said that the Broncos, we have to do a better job attacking downfield. We just got to take chances. We got to go because really the optimistic side of things is that the Broncos, they've been coming out and they've been playing it a little too safe, right? You can't play it too safe in the national football. Football League. You have to take chances. You have to be aggressive, but not reckless. And what the Broncos have been doing, they've just been too passive on the offensive side of the ball, and it's been very hard to watch. So this game could either be a surprise game for all of us covering the team and for Broncos fans that are watching the game, or it could be something that, you know what, the team is only going to go as far as the offense takes them, which right now I don't think that there's a lot of optimism by the fan base. But then again, sir, the NFL is weird. You have Mike White who went and, and led the New York Jets to a victory against the Cincinnati Bengals last week. So anything is possible. The NFL is freaking weird this year, sir. And that's, that's right. really kind of how I'll leave it on uh, today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. I just want to say, hey, th Sarah was great breaking things down with you here once again. Obviously, Sarah and myself are going to be back tomorrow for a brand new episode, Lockdown Broncos. We're going to break down our players to watch, keys to the game, and much more. And if you want to share yours, send them in on Twitter, at Cody Rook NFL, at Sarah Benninger, at Lockdown Broncos. We appreciate you for taking time out of your day to listen to us or to watch us. We appreciate your consumption of this channel here on YouTube, Lockdown Broncos. Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you never miss out on all the action. But with that said, Sarah, my friend, can't wait to talk Broncos football with you and the rest of Broncos country tomorrow.